right, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to do a match cut transition. This is for beginners in Adobe Premiere. So a match cut is basically when you have a transition. So remember, a transition is when one video clip ends and the next one starts. It's that space in between is the transition. And a match cut means you're basically matching. So let's scrub through this so you can see real quick how it goes. Notice how everything that I put together here, it's pretty much similar movement. The horizon and everything, I made it match up so that it's one seamless looking transition. All right, it just makes for more interesting storytelling. So to get the video clips that you need to do this project, you can go to pixabay.com and click on video. And then they'll show you some videos that you can download. I tried to search for stuff that was all in the same perspective and movement. So make sure that when you're, if you're going to copy mine and do the same type of perspective, I'd probably recommend that for your first time. And then maybe next time you can try a different kind of match cut where you use maybe a circle and some photography and stuff like that. So just make sure that when you're looking that you find something with the same, same perspective that will fit together good. So I'll just search road trip. And I see this clip here. So when I click on it, and I want to choose download. Now most of the um, clips that I like to download are the 1080. This is a lower resolution. You can still use this for this purposes, but just remember that when you're creating your uh, Premiere project that the first clip that you drop in for to make your sequence is going to be the resolution of the whole thing. So I would start off using a clip first that is 1080, but you can still use these. It's just a school project. It doesn't need to be like a perfect resolution. All right, to make a new project, just go to File, New Project, and we're gonna name this Match Cut. And then you need to make sure that you save it in the folder that has all of your clips that you've downloaded from Pixabay. So if you haven't done that yet, make a folder, put all of your um, assets that you're gonna use into that folder so that everything is together. Otherwise, you're gonna get all these media offline warnings and it will be annoying. So make sure everything's in the same spot. So I have mine in a folder called Match Cut. And, all right, so I'm ready to import media. So we can go over here to the project window and say import media, or you can just double click there and go ahead and start importing some of your clips. Um, I've downloaded more than I plan on using, but I'll go ahead and get the ones in here that I want to use. Some of these I didn't use because they just couldn't match up. After I tried, I thought I downloaded them and thought I wanted to use them, but they didn't really match up very well when I tried to use them. So it's a little bit of trial and error. You won't be able to use everything that you download. All right, so I have all of my uh, clips imported into my project window, so I'm ready to start creating some sequences with them. A couple things to remember is, remember some of the ones that were smaller, that were not 1080, make sure that you don't drag that one in first because then it will force your whole video to be that size. So since I want my final video to be 1080, I'm going to just download the higher res clips first. Now in our first assignment, I had you guys open up, double click on them and open them up in your source monitor and then put in and out points so that you would only import that section of the video, but we are just going to bypass that this time and we're going to go ahead and just drag everything directly into the um, timeline without going to the source monitor. You don't always have to do that, but it can be convenient for certain things. All right, so let's go ahead and start dragging things in here. I want everything that I put in here to match up with this being the focal point. So I'm going to make this new click on this next video layer here and I'm going to get the square and I am just going to draw a little square right there and I want to make sure that all of my videos end up being lined up where the perspective and the vanishing point goes right there. So this is just a little guide that you're going to leave on the whole time during your whole video. Make your video to be about 10 to 15 seconds is good enough. All right, so all these clips are going to be a lot longer, so I'm going to start making them smaller by just dragging on the end of them. Use, remember, you use plus and minus to zoom in and out of your timeline, and you can double click inside these track areas right here to make everything bigger so you can kind of see a thumbnail 
You can also just drag them like that. All right, let's see how much time this is. Yeah, that's a pretty good length there. I might shorten it up, but that seems to be pretty good. We have this at about two, three seconds. All right, so let's go ahead and just start dumping in our other videos. Um, I believe that I have this one next. And I'm going to go ahead and shorten this to be around three seconds also. And let's see how this one transitions. Okay, so this one you can see that the perspective or the vanishing point is a little bit off and they need to really match for this to look effectively. So what you're going to do is to click on that video that you want to move and go up here in the source monitor and at the top where it says effect controls, click on this. So you're probably going to have this window open the whole time. You probably won't use the source at all for this project. I want to show you more about effect controls. So let's see, we don't want the position to animate. We want it to stay constantly in that spot. So what you want to do is just, if you push the stopwatch, it makes an animation. We aren't doing that. We are just going to change the position and scale without animation. Now notice when I drag my cursor over here, I have a little finger with arrows on each side. This lets me change things by clicking and dragging back and forth. All right, so this is our X axis and this is our Y axis. Our Y axis is what we need to change. So notice how when I click here and drag, it moves the clip up and down. I want that white circle to be centered right where that square is. Now when I did that, you see that it made my video clip, you know, being cut off there. So I need to go to the scale and click and drag and make it bigger so that it's filling the whole frame. So if I need to pull it down just a little bit, maybe to the left or right, you can do that here on the left, on the left numbers. So this is X, this is Y, and that looks pretty good. So when I go from this clip to this clip, they match up perfectly. All right, let's bring in another clip. Um, I think I'll show you how to do this one. This is the one that is not 1080, and also it has an audio track. I don't want to use any of the audio so you can either delete it or you can just go to the audio track right here where it says A and you can click M for mute track. So any sound in here, I don't want to have any of that sound. All right, so let's get this one. All right, so this one is way off. Let's, first of all, let's zoom out. Let me scrub through this video real quick. So on this one, you can see that the, hor the horizon and vanishing point is moving around a lot at the beginning. But at the end, it stays pretty consistent. So I want to only use this part of the video. I'm going to cut this out. So this time I'm going to get the move, the selection tool and I'm going to go on the end of this clip and I'm going to bring it in here and cut it like that so that it stays pretty consistently where I want. All right, so let's get rid of that space. You can either just click and drag things over. Also, you can right click and just say ripple delete and it'll close in that space. And we want to go ahead and scrunch this up to be the same length of time as the others. Let's do plus and zoom in. All right. And now we need to enlarge this clip because this one, remember, it's not 1080. So it's, you know, it needs to be filling in the whole area. So you can do either do that the same way where I did before where I press scale. You can enlarge it that way. You can also right click on the clip and you can choose scale to frame size and that will bring it up to be bigger. All right, now you can see that the, my little square is over here, but my vanishing point is up here, so I still need to move this. So I'm gonna click on the position, and let's move it over to the side a little bit that way, and then we need to bring it down. We want that vanishing point to match up perfectly, otherwise this just doesn't really work well. All right, so let's try scrubbing through that. Yep, that looks like pretty good. Oh, but notice how when we get over here, it's moving a little bit. So another tool you can use in this case is called the slip tool. I have my cursor over here. See how it has these two uh, lines with an arrow with arrowheads on both sides. I'm gonna click on that. And what that does, this, this tool lets me slide the video around inside those in and out points so that I get to keep the part of the video I want. 
It's a little bit hard to explain, but since the end of my video seems to be less jumpy, I'm gonna scoot everything over so that I am just seeing more of the steady video. All right, that's looking a lot better. I think that's a little steadier. So now I just need to move this video with my position tool so that it's fitting up on that square. I wanna get that car right on the square there. Still a little bit on the jumpy side. So I think we can animate this so that it stays better. So let me show you how to do that. Let's put our start point here where we want, we have the video placed where we want it. Maybe just move it down on the Y axis just a little bit and maybe over here just a tad. All right, so that's where we want it to start. That's a pretty good transition. So when it goes from here to here, that looks clean. But notice how by the time we get out here, the square is kind of not on the car anymore. So what we want to do is go to the beginning of the clip and we're going to make some keyframes. So to do that, you're going to click this little stopwatch thing with position. I'm not sure if we're going to do an animation of scale, but I'm going to go ahead and click it just in case. Now this keyframe that it put over here, this means is how I want it to start. So we're good there. But by the time I get over to here, it is not in the position that I want anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another keyframe. So you don't push the stopwatch again. Now you're gonna go over here and add keyframes. So I'm gonna use scale and position. And now I just change it to be the position that I want. So let's go back up here to the X axis. Move that over a little bit. I don't think I need to use the scale, but anyway, let's see how that one works now. Oof, it's still a little bit weird, but let's maybe put one more keyframe where it's way off. So it's pretty off right there. I'm gonna add another keyframe. And I'm gonna lower this again. And let's see if that's a little better. So anywhere you see where the uh, vanishing point is off, like right here, this is not very good. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep adding keyframes to those areas. I don't really need the scale one, so I'm just gonna continue focusing on the position. So just add a keyframe and then move your clip. We wanna keep that little square that we made at the beginning to be at the end of the road. All right, so we're ready to add in the next clip. That one was a little bit trickier, but it's good to learn how to do all these things. Let's go ahead and add my next clip. I'll put this one in here. This is one of the easy ones, and I wanna go back to my selection tool, and let's shorten this up to be about the same length as the other videos. And see, this was an easy one. It's already matching up good, so I like that. Let's go ahead and pick the next clip. I'm gonna pick this walking clip here. This one is another easy one. We're gonna go ahead and shorten it up and see how this one also has an audio track. We've muted that track so we don't have to worry about hearing any unwanted audio. So now we see that this one Oh, our little square graphic has ended here, so we want to go ahead and make this longer so we can see the square the whole time. So we need to move this one a bit, so click on that clip, go up here, and let's do the effect controls, and we need to lower or raise that up a little bit and scoot it over. And then again, we need to scale it because it became off the edge there. Let's make it a bit bigger so we have room. All right, that works nicely. And all right, so I'm not gonna keep adding clips because I think you basically get the idea of what we're doing here. I don't wanna make the video to be too long, but just make sure that you go, that you make your square you know, long enough so that you can see it the whole time. So when you have your, your clips in here and you wanna get rid of the square, you don't need to delete it. You know, you can just toggle it off right here by clicking this eye. If you ever need to change the speed of something, like let's say that one of the cars that 
car or let's say that one of the road shots that you downloaded is really fast and the other one's really slow if you just right click on a video clip you can do speed and duration right here so I'm going to click on that to show you how and you can see you can change the speed if you want the duration to stay the same though which you probably will in this case you'll have to unlock that and then you can change the speed by clicking and dragging the speed right there and that will keep the uh, length of your video the same but you can make it go faster or slower because it is important in this type of match cut situation and where you keep the speed of everything to be very similar then it looks more seamless so there's just one more step left and that is to put in some transitions so we have our project window over here there's other things that you do over here on this project window so you're going to click these little arrows and you want to click on effects so you're probably going to go back and forth a lot in here so if you want to go back to importing stuff you just click project if you want to do some effects you can go in here so what we need to do is grab some video transitions and we're going to open dissolve I think that's the best cross dissolve is probably the best one we can add for here and you just want to click and dump it on your track and let's see how that does that should make it fade from one to the next yep that looks pretty good if you want to edit your cross dissolve you can double click on it and you can make it longer or shorter notice how also when it's selected up here in the effect controls it gives me a chance to change the duration there or it also lets me do center at cut so the cross dissolve is exactly in between in between the two things I'm actually going to undo that I kind of liked it better like this but I wanted to show you how to do it so I want to click on my cross dissolve and I'm going to copy it control C and then I want to put it in between each of these clips so if you go to your arrow keys on your keyboard remember if you press the up key it goes back to the beginning of every clip if you press the down key it goes to the end so I'm going to go here to that clip and I'm going to do control V it did put it in the middle here that's okay though if I want to change that I can double click it cancel that and I can say center at cut or start at cut and then go here and do control V and then press the down arrow and do control V and then I want one at the end too I'm going to do a dip to black so that it fades to black and then I also like to put a cross dissolve at the very beginning of my video all right let's play this back One other thing that you might come across that you want to do, if you want to speed the whole thing up, you can always click on a clip and you can choose this tool right here, Rate Stretch Tool. You can make everything a little bit shorter. So let's say I want all this to go a little bit faster. I'm going to make the duration of these clips a little bit shorter. Notice how it does delete all of my uh, dissolves that I just made, but that's okay. And then you can just right click if you right click there you can say ripple delete and it'll close the gap and then of course we have to go back and add our cross dissolves that's easy to do I don't know why this one keeps wanting to go on the cut line but I can click on it and say start at cut all right let's check that out I like this a little better you know it's a little faster I thought before it felt like it was too slow and make sure that you make your square not going past your video otherwise when you go to export it you're gonna have all this blank space and then we want to save it and then you're gonna go to export media and you want to name it so I'm gonna name mine match cut.mp4 and you need to tell it where so I'm going to browse over here and I'm going to put it in my match cut folder I'm going to make sure you keep everything together I'm going to leave the preset on 1080 format h.264 that's good to go and then you can just press export 